Jesus uses his visit to two sisters as an occasion to remind disciples that an important aspect of obedience is single-minded devotion to Jesus and to his word. A reading from Luke chapter 10. Now as Jesus and his disciples went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. Many of you know that the ELCA uses something called the Common Lectionary for scripture lessons. For the rest of you, the lectionary is a three years of Bible readings designed for weekly worship. In some ways, I like the lectionary. As a pastor and preacher, the lectionary forces me to deal with parts of the Bible, parts of Christianity that I'd sometimes rather not deal with. Things like Jesus calling Peter the devil, or telling us not to worry about anything, sell all you have, and so on. But there are disadvantages to the lectionary too. Some of the most difficult verses in the Bible, the lectionary, simply leaves out because they're too controversial. And the lectionary doesn't cover the whole Bible anyway, just a tiny fraction of it. The whole Bible would take years longer to get through. I don't necessarily like all the time the pick and choose approach. Another problem with the lectionary is continuity. In worship, we get only snippets of the gospel not larger chunks. And the gospel was meant to be read as a whole. See, the gospels were crafted so that the individual stories about Jesus uh, make a point, but the way one story follows another in the gospels also makes a point. With just a few verses in each weekly reading, it's easy to miss the different stories and how they relate to each other in the biblical narratives. The reason I bring this up about lectionary is because last week's story of the Good Samaritan relates to this week's gospel story, the tale of Mary and Martha. Last week, Jesus tells a lawyer who spends all his time thinking about God to go do something practical to help someone, even if it seems to, be make, to break the Jewish clean laws. This week, Jesus tells Martha it's okay to stop working, sit down and listen to him, even if it seems to break the strict Jewish custom of being a great host to a guest. So to the lawyer, Jesus says, don't just think about God, do something. And to Martha, Jesus says, don't just do something, sit there. Jesus seems to be saying the opposite things. And he is. Why do you suppose that is? Well, my best guess is different personalities. The lawyer probably spent most of his time thinking about God, while Martha spent much of her time working without thinking much about him. Jesus wants both devotion and action, both action and devotion. And so it may be then that different people need different advice from Jesus. So it is that we have to be careful when we read the gospel stories, because not everything applies to everybody. We have to search our hearts to see whether the message that comes through in the gospel verse applies to us or not. Because of who we are, as different people, we may need different advice from Jesus. 
We may need to focus on different aspects of faith, different than other people, so that we can be the well-rounded Christian who both thinks and does. That is why Luke placed the two stories side by side. What do you do more of in your life? Pondering God's wisdom and glory or working for God? If you're like most church members today, and most country folk, you don't spend a lot of time idle thinking about God quietly. You work so that you're more like Martha than Mary. To hear Jesus scolding someone for being too busy hits us closer to home than most of us would like. It's easy to get caught up on the rhythm of the seasons. Spring, summer, fall, winter all have their own tasks. What are your tasks this summer? Most North Country folk and small town residents are not pie in the sky dreamers like Mary. They're down to earth doers like Martha. We all know why. Dream too much in July and you have problems come January when the wind whips up and pulls off that loose piece of siding on your house. So what does it mean that most of us in this congregation are Martha's and not Mary's? Well, it means that to sit at Jesus' feet and listen or dream about God or our place in God's plan is hard for most of us. We'd rather be moving. We'd rather be doing something. But the next few months will give the folks at Salem ample opportunity to dream as well as to do. The new pastor is coming. Now, when I said a few weeks, it may be a little bit longer than that, but probably within a couple months. So the next couple months will be a time to plan and stretch and grow, not only for the council, but for the whole congregation. The two-year wait, nearly two years, for a shepherd is nearly over. It's time for all you Marthas to tap into your inner Mary. The planning and dreaming about your church is not just for council, not just for the pastor and a few others. No, everyone should have a hand. Everyone should dream a little about what you want Salem to be. Say what you like as long as it's respectful. I think I speak for the council in saying that we want all voices to be heard as we move into the future. So sit at the master's feet and listen, dream, and be. Not to make this a radically different church, I don't think it's going to be hugely different of the next pastor. This is a great church with a great family atmosphere here. No one wants to mess with that. You simply have the opportunity with a new pastor, a fresh perspective, to make the church even better, to share your family joy with more people in Deerwood and far away. Last week's lesson from the Good Samaritan was that doing God's will may not always be convenient. We may have to sacrifice even our time with God to do the right thing. For some, that service to God may be the best thing in the long run. So what does today's gospel lesson mean for us personally? It means that for many of us, to go in faith is to learn to be more like Mary and less like Martha. We may be the type of people that would be better off sitting and dreaming a bit more or just being in God's presence without needing to do anything. Maybe that second coat of paint can wait a week or two. Maybe that new redecorating doesn't have to be perfect. I'm sure Jesus won't care. Maybe we can spend a little less time working for Jesus and a little more time paying attention to Jesus. This summer, then, I urge you to take a walk, smell the flowers, sit in the backyard, swing if you have one, and enjoy God's creation just for what it is. Enjoy God for just who God is. What is true for us and God is also true of us and our summer house guests. Perhaps the best way to please most guests is to simply be with a guest. 
I'm sure Jesus would say so. In fact, he did say so today in today's gospel, didn't he? If we can do this sitting and dreaming, this being with ourselves, with our guests, and with our God, we will see a change, a change in how we do things when we do get ourselves in gear. No longer will we be running around worried about every little detail. Our priorities will be different. Gone will be the need for the perfect house, the perfect yard, the perfect faith in action. Our houses and families will be more relaxed and happier, even happier than they are right now. Our church likewise will reflect that change in ourselves. Our times together in worship and fellowship will have greater depth and even more joy. And this joy will give us even more energy to share the gospel and to fill each other's hearts. A story like today's, in only five verses, is tantalizing. We Christians wish that we had Martha's answer to Jesus. We'd like to hear what Mary had to say. We will never know for certain what Mary and Martha did and what Martha did next after rebuked, being rebuked by Jesus. I'm guess, guessing that she sat at Jesus' feet for a while, uncomfortably at first, but with increasing satisfaction as she was present to her Lord. But whether Martha sat down or not, I can be fairly certain what Jesus said after a bit. After Mary and Martha, or perhaps just Mary sat for a while, Jesus said to Mary, enough time with me for a while. Now go help your sister. And no doubt Mary did with amazing enthusiasm and energy for life and service. That is the gift she received by sitting at the feet of her Lord. That gift is ours too if we would stop and gaze at Christ and listen and learn. Sometimes we grow as we age, but sometimes we are better doing things right when we're young and we forget when we're older. When I was a boy, I dreamed of a treehouse, a place where the breeze would sway me and I could simply relax and be. But to have a treehouse, I had to build a treehouse. And so I did one summer when I was 13 from scratch. Every summer after that, until I graduated from high school, I spent nearly every night in that treehouse thinking about God and nature, getting closer to both. Those times alone with God made me who I am today. So how can this church carve out more time for sitting at the feet of Jesus? Salem West, the mustard seed, and many other outreach activities are fabulous and are truly life-changing. But we in the church who are Martha's risk crowding out Jesus with one more display, one more delivery, one more person to serve. Yet Martha's story today shows us that too much work can breed irritation, resentment, and burnout. Our gospel lesson tells us how Jesus handled that situation. It was Martha who was corrected and not Mary. So how can we both be both Martha and Mary? Mary and Martha. That is the challenge of a Christian church and the challenge of the Christian life. Think about it this week. Ponder it in your heart. Pray about it. May God help us to hold both women in our hearts this week and to learn from their example. Amen.